Uh, we saw the short end of the yield curve m move higher today, uh, really in reaction to, to the same thing happening over in Europe yesterday whilst U.S. bond markets were closed, as there was talk that uh, we might even get a rate hike this calendar year uh, from, from the Bank of England. When you see those sorts of moves, does it at the margin help the U.S.'s cause in, in the sense that there's a bit of tightening going on without you having to hike rates? Or, or is the opposite true, that if other central banks get going uh, before you, it might force your hand? Uh, I don't know if there's any sort of direct feedback there. I think uh, the Bank of England has to handle their situation. They're a more open economy. They've probably got other uh, concerns other than the ones we have here. Um, inflation tends to be higher uh, in the U.S. here than other places in the world. Um, uh, and I think part of that is that the, um, the fiscal and monetary response to the pandemic has been so aggressive in the U.S., uh, and so that's probably feeding it. You know, one thing I would say, a lot of people say, well, inflation's up because this is a supply shock. But what I would say to that is that uh, a supply shock alone cannot cause inflation. It's an, a supply shock being accommodated by very easy monetary policy. It's those two things together that lead to the inflation. You can't get inflation just by having one price go up. It has to be all the prices go up in tandem. And that only comes about when the monetary policy is accommodative in response to a supply shock. What about stagflation? We're seeing more and more mentions of it in the Wall Street notes. A lot of sell-off lately has been blamed on, on this idea of slower economic growth at the same time of persistently high inflation, which is a bad recipe. Reminds us of what happened in the 70s. Is that is that a concern for you? Yeah, I, I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, people have been debating around about this, but the, um, you know, in the 70s, you actually had outright recessions with inflation going up. Uh, I don't think we're going to get into that situation. I think the probability of recession is uh, exceptionally low at this point. Um, like I say at the outset, I said, well, you know, we're we're in great shape for growth going forward, even though the third quarter doesn't look uh, looks like it's being revised down quite a bit. We'll get that number here at the end of the month. But um, I think uh, slowing growth and higher inflation, while growth was 6 percent plus in the first half of the year, you'd probably expect something slightly less than that. Um, but I'm not sure I'd call that stagflation. I think that's a that's a overselling of the term stagflation. So switching focus a little bit, we had uh, Senator Warren on the show last week, and uh, part of the discussion was uh, exploring with her in more detail why she felt Chair Powell was a dangerous man. And, and uh, as you know, part of that comment initially from her stemmed from the fact that she felt you know, regulation on the banking sector had been eased too significantly. What's your response when you hear politicians use such uh, extreme terms like that towards someone you know very well? We're used to it. We've got tough, uh, tough skin here. Uh, we always get criticized from all sides. Uh, I, I, sometimes I take that as a sign that we're doing something right if we get criticized from, uh, from many different angles. Um, I think, you know, as far as the regulatory uh, situation, the, the big picture is that Dodd-Frank uh, was passed. There was some talk at some point about repealing Dodd-Frank. That never got traction. It's the law of the land now. And you had uh, both of the authors, uh, the leaders on that bill, Dodd, uh, Chris Dodd and, and Barney Frank, uh, saying that it was basically intact at this point. So I, I think we're in good, as good a shape as we can be, uh, given our, uh, our political process, to, to get uh, good protection for the banking system. And we've tried to implement that uh, as best we can. He especially has gotten it from both sides, first Trump and, and now Warren. But finally, this, this whole controversy over, over stock trading has added a new element and a new dimension. I, I don't think that you have been as actively trading as, as some of your peers on the Federal Reserve, but do you think that you guys should be able to, to trade stocks as, as you have? Yeah, the way I see this is that Congress sets the standard. They're the top policymaking organization. Uh, they're deciding on tax policy, regulatory policy, all kinds of things. Uh, so they set the ethics standards, and then that 
uh, spreads out to all the agencies, and we have to certainly uh, follow that. If Congress wants to raise that standard, I, I think uh, that's uh, definitely their uh, prerogative as the elected but body, they? and then all the all the agencies would have to f uh, follow through. I, you know, it's that's a political question for the Congress, but uh, if they do it, then th that means members are going to live with it and staff also are going to live with whatever standards they set. As far as I know, uh, we've, bet, we've met the congressional standards so far, but uh, we are looking into it, and, and Chair yeah. Powell has, has promised uh, extensive review of the situation.